I own a junk removal company. I started it about 10 years ago on accident. My mom had asked me, hey Alex, do you know anyone that can get some junk out of my customers' houses? My mom owns a house cleaning business. And at the time I needed some money. I'm like, yeah, mom, I can go do it. You know, some old lady's house. And didn't know what I was doing with a pickup truck and a friend. Made some money. I'm like, okay, this is interesting, you know? Uh, you know, I had a college degree and everything. And then I did a couple more houses and I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. It's helping me pay off my student debt. And then fast forward 10 years later and now we're doing 200 houses across the state of Illinois, southern Wisconsin, Indiana as well. Uh, my name is Alex Broaches. I'm with Junk Removal Dudes, and uh, we're going to do some filming today to talk about what I do. Worst thing I've encountered being a business owner the last 10 years. In a one-week span, I had about $20,000 worth of damage to the trucks. Worker was sliding on ice, ran into some stuff, I had dumb trucks um, break on us randomly brand new trucks that turned out to be lemons. We're stuck at the landfill We had 15 houses that day that we had to get to customers calling me when I first started my business I started with a little Ford Explorer old-school beat-up Ford Explorer my grandpa gave me rest in peace grandpa Thank you for everything my grandpa let me borrow this SUV and he's like Alex I'll let you borrow it I don't know if this little trailer is gonna help but see what you can do with it I said grandpa I'll make you happy and I took the truck people were laughing at me in the beginning They were saying what kind of crappy truck do you got? This is a Ford Explorer. Why are you bringing this to clean out junk? You have a little 10 foot wooden trailer. Well, I just tried ignoring what people were saying. I just stayed focused. Even when my trucks were breaking down at customers' houses, I still stuck with it. I didn't give up. And then like I had mentioned earlier, 10 years later, we're doing 200 houses a month across the state of Illinois, Southern Wisconsin, and uh, Western part of Indiana. So moving forward after all those struggles, right? That's the main thing guys with starting a business. You guys gotta stick it out because too many people just throw in the towel early and you guys are close, you're getting closer, you, you gotta stick with it. I've had sleepless nights, at nights where I'm pulling my hair. I've had nights where I'm vomiting from anxiety. I've had all kinds of stuff. But the thing is this, every time you get hit, you come back stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. The number one thing I learned from entrepreneurship is not just the money or anything like that. It's testing your mental toughness. That's what I learned from owning this business the last 10 years. The question I'm getting asked a lot, what's the craziest thing I found? We found guns, hidden cell phones that people had that the spouse didn't know about. We walked into an attic, there was no electricity. I went to go do an estimate and I looked to my right around like nine o'clock at night and there was like an eight foot mannequin looking right at me. That was pretty weird. We found a love letter from the 1920s that had fallen out of a box that the homeowners didn't know about. It was from like a relative that they hadn't talked to in a long time. We've done close to 8,000 jobs in the last like 10 years, so we've seen it all. The hardest thing about running a junk removal business, you know, you have more fun, but there's a lot more headaches along the way too. I, I look at my employees like family. That's the most important part. Uh, the craziest thing I found at a junk job has to be like a bunch of like mannequins and stuff like that in the basement. It was. It was pretty weird. The craziest thing I found is probably like a hundred arrowheads. Life-size Rock'em Sock'em robots. That was at the uh, Rochelle job. The first job you had me do. Don't work too hard. That's all we do is work hard. What's the craziest or weirdest thing that you found at a junk job? A bunch of Spider-Man comics, that was pretty cool. Back from like the 60s and 70s. Like a whole train set up in someone's basement. They built it themselves and it took them 10 plus years and we got rid of the whole thing. And lastly, I can think of, call it the North Pole. Went in this basement, everything was Christmas. You open up cabinets and it's Santa Claus will pop out at you. Candy canes hanging off of the ceiling. That's what I would have to say is probably craziest or weirdest, but pretty cool at the same time. We had a giant grandfather clock one time. I think a foot taller than me. It was big and gold. We tried to go donate it, but nobody would take it for donations anywhere. But it was a really nice big clock, old grandfather clock. The last thing I can think of, World War I um, bayonet. It was a little rusted and the customer told us it was authentic and an army guy, he got to keep that and that's hanging up on his wall somewhere. Unlock a world of wild discoveries with just a click. Subscribe now and never miss a crazy find again. Whenever taking you know, calls from customers, it's very important to build a rapport with the customer, figure out what the problem is, and you're ultimately the, you're the solution to their problem. One thing that we've done and able to get like an awesome five-star rating average in 10 years of business is the customer service has to be top-notch not only is the service top-notch but the customer service has to match that if you combine those two more times than not you're gonna have the ingredients for a very successful business one thing that I really like too uh, it's called the double bottom line and that's from Ted Leonsis his book he's the owner of the Washington Capitals hockey team he said his book the double bottom line 
you want to have uh, the bottom line. You want to make you know good money, but also too you want happy customers and also happy employees as well. This has to all come together. If you have all this coming together, you have a winning strategy. I've been, I think, almost prepared to run a business because growing up I had, I wanna say traumatic childhood, but it wasn't the best childhood. Uh, my father went to prison when I was nine years old and that changed my life forever. Growing up poor, we were living in different motels with my mom and two brothers. You know, you know, every time we'd go to school, I was so embarrassed a lot of times because couldn't afford to get, you know, newer clothes, couldn't go on school field trips, couldn't afford that. And the thing that really bothered me the most growing up was when we would go to school, when the teachers would ask for our address and I was too embarrassed to give them the address because we were living in like motels and I was always living in different places, leaving here, going there. When you have that insecurity, embarrassment and anger, that really thrives in your spirit later in life and for me it worked i mean a lot of people could take that for the negative abuse drugs and alcohol which i very well could have done i actually wrote a book about this and i talked about all my hardships growing up with depression business failures i've had in the past you know overcoming failure and that's the number one thing about being an entrepreneur is overcoming failure and i always tell this to people too right like in my opinion you're not an entrepreneur until you fail 10 times, you're not an entrepreneur until you lose your first couple million dollars and start over and make it back again. Entrepreneurship is the ultimate test to test your mental toughness. And I feel like because of my childhood, my hectic, chaotic childhood, it helped in the long run. And I started working at nine years old. I was mowing lawns. I was picking up dog poop. Actually, we're going to pass by here, uh, my old hometown of Sycamore, Illinois. This is where I first started working, man, nine years old. I was busting tables at restaurants, my uncle's Greek restaurant. I was, you know, mowing lawns, anything to make money. I started working at nine years old. So that's when my true entrepreneurship journey began. With that being said, guys, I'll tell you this. If you're gonna get into the junk removal business or any business for that matter, get ready to buckle up because that's gonna be one roller coaster of a ride. The most I made in one day in the junk removal business was about 17,000. This particular project was cleaning out one of the first hardware stores that opened up here in rural Illinois. So junk removal dudes services Chicagoland. But this particular project was a little bit out west and we cleaned out an old hardware store, basement, first floor, the whole entire place. This was a fun job. We found a lot of cool stuff. Now, you're probably asking yourself like, What's the cool thing about the junk removal business or how do you get into it? At the end of the day, it comes down to this. With the junk removal business, you have to have solid equipment. That's very, very important. I see a lot of people getting into it. And that's how I started too. You start off with like, you know, like a more beat up truck, which is fine to start. However, if you're really able to take a loan out, save some money up and do it right, try to get the best equipment from the get go, that really sets off the momentum for the business as well. Employees. I've been very fortunate. I've had a great group of guys. Those guys made the company happen. It wasn't just me. I put a lot of the hard work into it, the sweat equity as well. The employees make or break the company. So I'm very fortunate. And like I said many times over, they're not just employees. Those are my family members. And that's how I treat them as such. The other cool thing too, guys, with junk removal, if you guys want to get in the junk removal business, I will say this. There's a lot of money to be made in junk removal, but also too, more importantly, you have to have fun doing it. That's the most important thing. Too many people that are watching this right now are going to want to get into this business or that business and you know what yeah you can make money but here's the thing you got to have fun doing it if you're not having fun it's just gonna be another day right you want to make sure when you wake up in the morning you're excited to kick butt and that's how I feel every day back then when I had my old job before I started my business I used to have something called the the Sunday scaries where on Sunday night you would go to bed and just get anxiety fortunately I've not had that feeling in 10 years to be honest Monday is my favorite day of the week I love Sunday nights because I know when I wake up in the morning, I got another week to conquer. So uh, check us out, Junk Removal Dudes, on Facebook and Instagram. Visit our website, thejunkremovaldudes.com. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me anytime. Thanks, Talk Benjamin.